Hey friends, today on the show, we're talking all about dating apps, how poor Kelsey over there is suffering <laughs> with them and what you must do if you wanna succeed on dating apps. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this. Also, why the time in your life where you got the most compliments on your fashion could be drastically hurting you now. You don't wanna miss this. Also, we're talking about our new friends on the show, Macy's, and I have all my picks at macy's.com backslash better together to help you in the new year uh, get inspired with your fashion for uh, your athletic desires. I know um, I've kind of littered that pick list with all the things that I'm getting myself. I think you guys will really like it and so much more. Um, join us. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe. I can't talk. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Bye. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote for the day. Sometimes we have a quote. Sometimes we don't have a quote. Sometimes I realize, oh, we don't know a quote. But today we have a quote. What? I feel like I always gave you a quote. Do I frick you on quotes sometimes? Sometimes you have. I haven't <gasps> said anything. I just kind of let it go. But oh, I'm really... I Really, who are you fricking? Well, the audience. Freaking. I really, I really, am, I care a lot about my quotes. I know you do. I, I even gave you two today, oh. just for our two subjects. Well, then she's making up for it, guys. <laughs> uh, what you wear is how you present yourself to the world, especially today when human contacts are so quick. Fashion is instant language. Is that good? Ooh, fashion is instant language. Um, I don't know how to say Prada's first name. Mucia? Mucia? Mucia. Mucia. Okay. Sounds Prada. good. How about Prada? Um, Mucia. And um, the other quote is, <laughs> which I'm just dying because I'm looking at Pooja's camera in the studio filming the light bulb above, and I just saw her hand covering it. No, that's it. Kev. I'm like, that's, that's Kev. Oh, it's Kev? <laughs> that's like, Kev. <laughs> if you're trying to adjust it, it didn't work. <laughs> Honey, coming to us from uh, the planet... Saturn? Is that Saturn Venus over there? there. <laughs> you guys, Kevin is zooming in and we are just getting a full shot of a light. But it looks Lovely. like he's in another, like in, in space yeah. because there's like another little planet oh, yeah. and then another little planet. Orbiting. <laughs> yeah, he's in an orbit, but he can't hear us. So we should talk shit about him right now. Um, actually, I shouldn't because he was very, very kind to me yesterday. I woke up to go to work and he was like, do you need like do you need me to make you coffee or breakfast? Aww. And I was like, yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> so thanks, sweet. Queen Kev. Okay, the second quote to make up for Kelsey screwing you all over on so <laughs> many episodes without quotes and me just going along with it. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, be with someone who says, let's fix this. I can't lose you. Not Salmon. Not salmon.com. <laughs> What's not salmon.com? That's what Google told me it was. And I was like, all right. Okay. But that pertains to our dating portion of the show. I was going to say, what the heck does that have to do with fashion? We're talking fashion today. Be with someone who says, let's fix this. I can't lose you. Okay. So we are going to talk, by the way, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about... Uh, some fashion, but we're also going to talk about dating in COVID inspired by Kelsey's um, almost date with a motorcycle man, uh, I guess. That Kevin shot down. Uh, Kevin, of course, said something about, oh my God, you guys have to talk about this today. It's going to be so funny. He's like, of course I reacted the way you would think. I'm like, well, if it has to do with a motorcycle, even though you love motorcycles, you don't want anybody you love on a motorcycle. So I imagine that didn't go well for Kelsey. It so didn't. we are going to be talking about COVID dating. <laughs> a lot of our friends are struggling as as you could imagine, um, we have one friend who is like, I waited my whole life to like, you know, be single and um, not waited her whole life. What would it, what was her quote, honey? Here it was just that, you know, she was in a committed relationship for years, like 17 years. And she's like, and I finally get to be free. And it happens during COVID. <laughs> but remember, we're not just going to talk about COVID dating. It's, it's, COVID dating and dating in the app world. Yes. Not dating fun. In the app world. So <laughs> uh, put your seatbelts on, everybody. It's going to be a fun one. Um, <laughs> you know, I used to have so much fun doing dating episodes because I'm the only one, I think, that's been in a long relationship. 
all of my girlfriends are still single and struggling. And they're always like, I want a Kevin. I'm like, yeah, you didn't want a Kevin when Kevin was Kevin. You know, he was not appealing to you. He was bankrupt. He was driving a van (laughs) and he was broken. None of you wanted that. Okay. You wanted a billionaire. You wanted a Mercedes and you wanted a lot of money so you could buy you Chanel bags. Oh my God. Sorry. And I'm being real. (laughs) Except for Alyssa. Alyssa doesn't want all that shit. Alyssa wants Crate and Barrel. Pottery Barn was a Crate and Barrel? Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel life. Um, (laughs) Wait a second. Listen, there's plenty of women out there who want to date a guy in a cool van. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, my new obsession is I think I want to date a drug dealer because I'm obsessed with the one from Euphoria. So I'm going to start dating drug drug dealers. I mean, Jason Bateman plays a great drug dealer with like a heart and Ozark. That's what I'm saying. Same with Fez. Mm, Interesting. mm -hmm. So van, drug dealer, you know. Yeah. Motorcycles. (laughs) <laughs> Pooja, I imagine your um, lovely Indian parents would love for you to bring home a drug dealer. Oh, they'd be ecstatic. In, they'd be so excited. You know what's really funny? So <laughs> this is one of my most tragic parts of my life. So when I first started dating Kevin, it was like hush, hush. And I think the thing that was crazy was when they found out I was dating him. My my dad was very upset. Obviously, Kevin's not Greek. My dad's hopes and dreams are shattered. <laughs> and then add to it, he probably realized she might be having sex. Yeah. Life shattering, heart shattering, <laughs> world shattering. And so my brother saw that as an opportunity. Oh Miss Perfect finally did something wrong and went in. And we won't go into the details of it, but guys... It's like stuff you'd see in a movie and it's times a billion people who make movies don't even believe the story that we've told anyway. So (laughs) we don't need to get dark here, but the truth is my brother, one of his lines was, or the person that my parents gave birth to outside of me. Oh my um, God. The, one of his lines was, you should be with a guy like Johnny drives a Lexus. Was Johnny a drug dealer? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Meanwhile, a lot of the boys I liked were all drug dealers. That was just like kind of the thing back home. See? <laughs> that was just your vibe. Was that, drug that, dealers. Sisters That's right I was here. around. <laughs> Thank God my parents didn't let me date. Thank God I listened to them. Oh my, my God. life could have taken a different turn. We've talked about this on the show before. Instead, I got my nice little nerd who loves minivans. And we recently realized last night that Kevin is a gemstone. Has anyone started watching Gemstones yes. yet? Yes. Okay. There was a moment in Gemstones where one of the brothers says what, honey? <laughs> well, by the way, there's many moments that, <laughs> that I relate to. We're going to listen. But the one moment he goes, well, you know, dad, like, you know, you shot me down because about my idea to buy uh, a Fiat because <gasps> just to be able to use to pick up groceries. No way. For and, you know. As you know, anyone, Kevin has you know, an Kelsey obsession. Knows, I've been looking at you know, my Fiat's, my mini Cooper coupes because LA parking, it's limited. And I said, I'm going to get a license plate for errands. I said, I'm just going to go use, just use it for errands, Maria. And so the character, Adam Devine says it on the show. Oh and Maria my just looks gosh. At me. And then last night we see, Wait, um, I looked at him and lost my mind. Yes. I go, these idiots. That's unreal. They're like, by the way, these, they're a bunch of morons. They're a <laughs> bunch of idiots. And oh, I go, gosh. that's you. Oh, oh my God. My I'm married God. to a gemstone. And then, and and then, then <laughs> last night, Danny McBride drives into the scene with um, Eric Andre in his <gasps> Love 1970s Eric Cadillac that I'm also looking oh to get. God. And he rooms on. And of course, Eric Andre has the same 1970s Cadillac as well. And so Maria looks at me again. Unreal. Because Kevin's been looking for a Cadillac for two years. (laughs) At the height of COVID, this man made me go. I didn't know where we were going. He's like, I'm just going for a ride. And we go for a ride. And what do we do? We meet on the side of the road, a man with a Cadillac that Kevin was going to see. I go, Kevin, you don't even have a mask on. Like, this is highly unsafe. No, no, no. It's a caddy. We're fine. We're immune. We're immune. And he like goes in. It's different when it's a Cadillac. No, oh, I'm sorry. Even, even no, no. Even Fauci, Mr. Doctor Fauci, said it. Oh yeah. When it comes to the, the CDC, Cadillac, said that. you might have had <laughs> yes. your gator. You might have had your gator, but you didn't have like a real mask, and it was really scary times. You don't and need he goes one in with an old Cadillac. to some random Maria. man's Cadillac. Maria, Winnie, Winnie's upset. Winnie is mad. Why, Maria? <laughs> yes. Because I 
want slash need to do what for the family? Provide. Provide? Bring. Oh, popular class, class back, back to the family. Oh, I really That's screwed right. you. This yeah, family you has lost oh, class. By the way, the funniest thing is to hear you guys on RGF. Kelsey doesn't pay attention. Pooja's the A student who remembers I everything Kevin says. Every time Kevin does a cue, Kelsey, Pooja's the only one who knows the cue. Kelsey's like, Kel, Kel reminds me. Kel comes to me. <laughs> Thank you. I, it's because Kel says it when we're not all together. So that's um, why I know um, it. We Kelsey, were lost, so, yes. Yeah, Kelsey, yes. this is the time where you can say to Maria, I learned from watching you <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> because for 20 years, I've been saying the same to things either. to Maria yeah. and then she'll hear it from someone else and be like, you'll never guess what so-and-so said. Oh my gosh. You know, so. I have to, I have to throw a little nugget in here while Winnie continues Shut to up, bark. Shut up, Winnie. Nobody likes you. want Maria. Nobody I, likes you, you little bitch. Oh my goodness. I, I love you. Wait. Does she want her mother? Yes, actually? she does. Wow. She doesn't want her sister or her auntie, whatever. She wants her mother. So here she comes. Winchenza comes into the shot. Hi, Winnie. Oh, my little bunny. Okay. Mm. okay Winnie. Oh, guys, I snuggled with her well, Max a lot this morning. It was I a sad am. morning. I am really upset about that, Winnie. But okay. what I was going to say is I did see an old picture of Kev the other day, and he was looking like a Kennedy. Yeah, Kel showed it to me, and I was like, oh, was that, is she showing us a Kennedy boy or something? And Stop it was it. Kevin. It was Kevin. Swear was he lives. wearing, like, his chinos and stuff? I don't remember. Let me look. Let's well, look why did up. he look like a Kennedy? He, he just, like, he just, in it, I, he just looks like a Kennedy. He like, a pretty background, and he was, like, looking He literally looks like posing. a Kennedy. Yeah, I thought it was a Kennedy. That was it a modeling us. photo, honey? He's on a rock. He has some no, high I, top. Well, I honestly, a friend sent it to me. <laughs> I have no recollection of it. <laughs> At all. No. It's just, like, no. it could be on a postcard. Can you send it to Pooja to pull up? Are you able to pull up, Pooja? Do you know how to do that yet? Yes, I can. Yes. I can, can. Co- I can coach you through it. Yeah, you can coach me through it. Okay. Pooja, I'm going to email it to you. And you're going to open your email. You guys, it's literally the best picture of all time. Honey, how do you not remember this? I have no recollection <laughs> whatsoever. You know what I can do that might be easier? I can superimpose it in post there we go so boom well easy yeah boom hey solution queen solution but yeah you guys he looks phenomenal i'm like kevin the kennedy he's got his dark shades on sitting on a rock i can't you Anyways. guys um so that was before that's a great picture it's before the weight of the world broke my spirit oh <laughs> <laughs> wait so honey there was more than just the two moments we realized you were a gemstone oh yeah, that's well, the, last night, the, one of the characters had the the click glasses that click together. Eric click Roberts. Reading glasses. Yeah, Eric Roberts pulls off his click glasses. You know, Kevin wears Which, his glasses around his neck oh, and yeah. then they click on. Then they have, they have the stand-up arcade video games yes. in their living room like I Oh, have. yeah, that's yep. right. Adam does. Yeah, so Kevin's officially a gemstone. <laughs> that is I'm the funniest totally thing of my stone. life. <laughs> yeah, I am. And by the way, listen, we're going to keep everyone posted on my mini Cooper Coop. Oh which I'm looking for the perfect one to mm-hmm. run errands in the family. And then more importantly, getting harder and harder to find the two door Cadillac that I want to do what Maria bring class, bring class back to the family. I still do. I, right. I got you. I got you. Family's disgrace. Did you like my class. throwing it off to Kelsey? <laughs> Kelsey doesn't ever listen. <laughs> Pooch is the A I've student. Been, yeah. Kelsey doesn't ever listen. I've been telling you for the last four years, we have to bring class back to <laughs> this mm-hmm. family Funny. by getting a, a 1970s oh, no. Cadillac. I know oh, my guys, yeah. maybe an 80s We're one. We're going to have to superimpose another photo. So this morning, so last night, We had such a nice night. We sat by the fire outside. I like coerced Kevin to get off the recliner, his favorite place. And I said, can we please just go sit outside? You know, you have these things in life. Like you, you're, you have these dreams like, oh, someday if I have like a little cabana, I would like sit in there and read and have wine. And you always say these things and you never really do them. (laughs) You do them with friends if they're Mm -hmm. here, but you never do it on your own. Well, at least we don't. And by the way, we just worked our butts off all these years we never like you know really got to enjoy a lot of things unless it was like an event so last night I forced him I said it's a beautiful night it's not cold let's go sit outside in the cabana and light the fireplace and have a beer which by the way that beer hurt this morning one beer wow I think with COVID um there's like a thing because Mm. that's the second time I had like a couple sips of hot sake 
last week and it mm. affected me really badly. Headache? <clears throat> yeah. Eesh. So anyway, um, we're sitting out there, we're having such a nice time. And um, and I forget the moral of the story. Why was I telling the story? Cabana, how you don't use it? Oh, you. no. And I was saying how happy I am. Mm. Like, I just like was really happy. I feel like we're finding our groove. We're starting to like enjoy our house, enjoy being alone. We've never been alone. Um, and we're finding our groove and I'm kind of finding my way back. And so this morning, just so you all know, if you have lost someone, uh, the highs and lows, mm. the, the, the high is followed by the low. So then this morning... I'm approving uh, a video and my mom happened to be in one of the photos and I just looked at her and I just got so sad seeing how kind of weak and tired and even like old she looked Mm. and she, she was so young and she never looked her age. My mom, my mom was always like really beautiful skin and radiant. and radiant And so, and just seeing her with the little beanie. And so I shut the video down and I kind of didn't think about it. I was about to get in the shower and I go, you know what? I'm going to go cuddle the babies one last time because I wanted like that like zhuzh of like love. And so Max is laying on the bed. Winnie's right next to him or right behind him. And, um, and so I get in, I start cuddling with Max and then Winnie starts barking. So I cuddle with her (laughs) and then it just hit like a Mack truck and the whale session. Mm -hmm. And then Kevin comes in and I'm just like, guttural crying in the fetal position and just so sad. Like it just, it's, it's an uncontrollable thing. It just hits. Mm. And even though I am happy, like I am, things are going really well. Um, you know, it's not something you can evade and it just happens. And so Kevin took a picture or he started taking some pictures of me, like snuggling with Max. Cause I never get enough pictures with them. I feel like, and he shows me this one picture and it's freaking hilarious. Max's huge, happy mug. And you got to understand, Max is a 130 pound German shepherd. His head is bigger than most people's whole bodies. Truly. And so. Especially Pooja's. <laughs> yeah. Pooja and, <laughs> Pooja's body and Max's head could be pretty comparable, actually. <laughs> and so it just took me totally out of it and just made me laugh so hard. Mm. And that's why dogs are such incredible gifts. And so we will superimpose that right now for you. So you can see, because he is just the cutest thing and just, I love him so much. So anyhow, um, I feel like I'm in that like little bit of fog after you've just cried your guts out where you're just like, so. Trying to find your feet again. Yeah. Yeah. But... But I respect, I mean, and I've told you this before, Maria, it's like, I really admire how you let yourself feel because a lot of us don't. I know I don't. It's like, if I feel it coming up, I'm like, nope, don't have time for this. But you just let it out. And that's so healthy. And I'm really trying to, you know, learn that from you and take that, take that on myself. So anyways. Where do you think it comes from where you want to shut it down? Uh, I think a lot of things. I think I was always, well, I know verbally I was told not to cry. Mm. I'm a crier. I'm like, that's kind of my MO. When I get frustrated, when I get mad, I cry. I just, it's my thing. And I was always told, don't cry. Why are you crying? So I think it comes from Mm -hmm. that. I think it comes from, you know, having to be the strong one. Um, So I always just stifle it. And then Mm -hmm. in like past jobs too, you know, it's like, don't show emotion or else they perceive you as weak. So I was like, okay. Yeah, no I used emotion. To, I I asked because I I used to produce my cries. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I used to be like, oh, uh, I can cry on January fourteenth. Looks like I have a window between three mm. and four. I can cry then. I swear to God, I that's how bad it. it was. That's how bad it was. Um, and I know, and I'm a crier too. Like yeah. I, I'm a very like emotional being. Yeah. Um, but um, it didn't stop me. I mean, I still cried. I just hated it, and it was really hard. I think this is just different. It's um, you won't know until you deal with it, and I hope you don't have to deal with it till your mom's one hundred and twenty. <laughs> then you're like, please, lady, go. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, lady, Deb. I don't know what you're hanging out for. It's one hundred and twenty. Deb's going to one hundred and fifty. I know it. I can see it in her. Um, but yeah, it's it's just one of those things. But yeah. anyway. Um, like I said, thank heavens for dogs and Truly. loving husbands because he did come in and was like squishing every part of me, trying to squish my head, then my heart. Aww. The heart part helped. Um, <laughs> let's transition into some fashion because, Ooh. as you know, I've been um, 
on a little fashion kick. Actually, I feel like I kind of started my fashion rediscovery after my mom died because, you know, creativity makes you happy. And for me, I I was kind of just moping around the house and sad. And so I kind of looked to fashion to have a little bit of fun, get some satisfaction, be creative. And it really helped me actually. Um, looking back, it was almost like I knew it was going to help me and it was bringing me back to me Mm -hmm. because it had been about my mom and keeping her alive and keeping her safe and giving her safe passage and whatever for so many years. Um, you know, you just kind of lose a little bit of yourself. And so it was my way of kind of coming back to myself And so I was having a lot of fun with fashion and fashion posts. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram at Maria Menounos, me, noun, (laughs) O-S. That's how I learned how to spell it. Yeah. (laughs) And so so I've been having fun. And then recently in COVID, getting COVID, not in COVID, COVID's been a two-year thing. But when I got COVID just before the holiday, I really started looking into kind of trends and what's happening out there and what's cool and what's, you know, what's going on. And then I started realizing, okay, there's certain areas of my life I need to adjust. So enter Macy's. Now I'm going to tell you guys a quick story before I get to what the fashion hits were. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I have something fun to share. All right, we're back guys. Okay. Fun thing to share. You, you know, Pooja might not know. Kevin does know. Um, I was a fragrance spritzer. Mm-hmm. Because I made a lot of money being a fragrance spritzer back in college uh, for Macy's. So um, aside from having shopped at Macy's my whole life um, and, uh, and being a fragrance spritzer was like the next kind of level thing. Um, I was hitting up their website. They're uh, a new supporter of the show. FYI, everybody. Heel Squad. Um if you go to macy's.com backslash better together, I have a bunch of pics of things that I am um, getting, I've gotten, am eyeballing. Kevin, please don't go there because <laughs> there are some things for you that I've been pulling Hilarious. <laughs> for Valentine's Day, a little gift for you. Um, so please don't go. Uh, and so anyhow, I think, um, and I handpicked all these items, guys, and I'm adding to it every day. Every time I kind of see something I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, do you think I'll look good better in the Cadillac or in the Mini Cooper Coupe when I'm running errands? With what I got you? Yes. Or, uh, well, Don't laugh, Kelsey. I have, I think it was three options. So I'm getting all three sent so I can pick the one live in person because mm. I've tried some other ones and it didn't work. And so I was like, okay, these are, these are my three options. So I believe a mini Cooper coupe is the answer, honey. I agree. <clears throat> it's the yeah. way to go. So nice. although we're going to need something for date night in the Cadillac, <laughs> you know what I like about the Cadillac, Maria, we've talked about this too. What is it that I like after I bring class back to family successfully. What's mm-hmm. the other thing about why we need the Cadillac? So you can take me on dates because my woman is woman can sit right next to me on the bench seat. Yes. Like we're not separated. Yeah. There's no separation on the bench seat. Oh, I like one, there's like I no middle one console? hand on the wheel. You guys don't know about bench seats. Uh, uh-uh. yeah. No, yeah. there's just one hand on the, the wheel, right? Slouch down. And then my other arm is around my woman. <laughs> oh my God. Sit next to me on the bench seat. Guys. I dare all of you. These are, this is why I've tuned Laugh him out. Because this is the shit I hear every, every day. day. <laughs> I can't. You'll see. This is going to be the family with class. This is going to be the guy who's with his woman. And watch everyone follow. I'm out. So, honey, I just have to say, unfortunately, I don't think Macy's can fulfill your needs because... Macy's is a little too cool for whatever attire you think you're taking me in this 70s Cadillac in. Okay, moving on. Um, anyhow, so yeah, it's just like a little fun fact. I did fragrance spritz for years at, um, at Macy's. And so what I love about Macy's, um, aside from the fact that they are coming on board with Better Together, yes. um, is that they're a one-stop shop. They have everything. So it's super easy to go in there. You, I know, love the coupons. Maria, my (laughs) grandmother, bless her, made me fall in love with Macy's. I was always, you know, 
you know, she would want to, she'd be like, let's go to Macy's. And I'm like, really? And then we'd get there and I'd be like, oh my God, you are right. Mm -hmm. These pair of pants, typically 90 bucks. And they are like, oh, just kidding. 40% off, 30% off. Mm -hmm. Macy's is the best. It's the best. And like you said, it's like you can find from jeans to like cooking stuff. I mean, they have everything. So yeah, yeah, my grandma made me a Macy's gal. Got my Macy's card. Mm-hmm. We go there. Yeah, it's it's just the best. It, it is easy. And they have really great brands. I mean, this splendid yep. um, cashmere sweatshirt I have, you can get splendid there. You can get frame. You can get so many different brands. But um, Your new obsession free people. Oh my God, my new obsession free people. Okay, so let's get into some of the fashion <laughs> obsessions. So I know you're obsessed with my new jeans. Um, I, I literally need them in my life. I'm obsessed. I'm going to tell you guys about free people for a second. Free People has not come on board of the show yet, but they will because I am obsessed with them. So, and by the way, Heel Squad, we go after our sponsors <laughs> yeah. because we want them to align with our true like passions and, and feelings. So, um, well, Heel Squad, can I just <clears throat> say something once again? I, I'm just going to be the, oh my God. the bad guy on this show. Well, can I tell you really how many deals oh, yeah. over the years Maria has said no to? Because she doesn't use the brand, like mm-hmm. the brand, believe in the brand. Respect. And and I and every time she says no, I just see another toy, another Cadillac, uh, go another out the Cooper Cooper, <laughs> another stand up arcade game, another ski ball game or pinball machine, all just evaporate. Yep. But the truth is, yeah, Maria only back only only goes for the the uh, products and the brands that she authentically loves. The best is. Isn't that wonderful? Kevin very much, well, no, maybe doesn't very much now that I see his attitude now, but he, in the latter years, has appreciated my integrity level. No, I do. No, back then there was a set, hold on, there was a seven figure deal that I said no to that he was like, you have too much integrity. And I'm like, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. And by the way, this is a poor girl from Medford saying no to a seven figure deal. And it's not like I had seven figure deals and everywhere. Like, it's not like I was, you know, right. Whoever, like who's crushing right now. So I do, I do take it really seriously. Was there something you wanted to add, honey? No, I I do. In the long run, I appreciate that. I appreciate you as a human being, but, but for the know, Cadillac purposes, but for the regular guy in me, it's yep. like, really, can you just throw me a bone? Throw me a bone. <laughs> throw me a bone. <laughs> yeah. me a bone. Um, okay. So, um, some of the things I'm loving obviously are like splendid, um, cushy, mushy, yummy stuff mm-hmm. because I feel like now we're all just in mushy. And I think Kim Kardashian just came in at the right time with like Skip. all of her oh, yeah. stuff because it's like athleisure and comfy is the way now. Mm -hmm. And so, and anything else we're wearing has to kind of mimic that energy on Mm -hmm. our bodies, which is by the way, what's been authentic to me forever. I've never, ever allowed myself. Well, I shouldn't say never. It's very rare where I will wear something to suffer. Yeah. There was one time I wore a, I went to Burberry. They dressed me head to toe and I had this metal necklace and I still have it. It's probably like 30 pounds and my neck was a wreck and I had like, it was dug into my body and it took days for it to go away. Sounds awful. It was the coolest outfit ever, (laughs) but it's very rare. I'm always about comfort. I wore boots underneath my wedding gowns. Um, I wore um, Uggs under my Oscars dresses and stuff like that. Like I was really, really always about comfort. Um, so if you're <clears throat> thinking about fashion trends, luckily it's a trend to be comfy it is. and, <clears throat> and so free people, that's also at Macy's that I love is I'm really becoming obsessed with this brand. And we went there last summer yep. in, um, Connecticut mm-hmm. or Boston. Where it was were Boston. We? we were at the, it was, <coughs> I forget what the name of the mall is, but it was like, had a couple little cute shops. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I bought a hat mm-hmm. and a vest. And a flannel, your little flannel My vest. My little flannel yeah. vest, which I have in Connecticut. And because I figured I'd probably wear it more there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I was like, okay, like there was like a few things. Whoever they got in that store now um, to designing is crazy amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they've got free people um, like 
they've got their athleisure and all of that. They've got their sweaters and their yummy things, but their jeans I was wearing yesterday, as you know, mm-hmm. I'm obsessed. So you can go to Macy's.com and check them out. In fact, we'll put, um, I haven't put any of my free people picks on there yet. I'll put some oh, on yeah. right away. You know what I will say, Maria? <clears throat> I knew Macy's carried free people for a minute because when I was growing up, free people was like the it thing, especially really? in like, oh yeah, especially in middle school. Same here. They had, Pooja, do you remember those like lacy oversized dresses <laughs> that you would get and then get the slip underneath? Oh, of course. Yeah, right. Of but they were, they were so expensive. And yeah. so I'd always be like, oh, I can't, I can't buy it. But then you'd go to Macy's and it would be on sale. So I would always go to Macy's for my free people. There you go. The best. The best. The best. So you'll see um, one of the things I, in COVID, not in COVID, I have to keep fixing this. When I had COVID <laughs> at the holiday, um, I was just constantly looking up like all the different fashion trends and all the things that are going on. And I started realizing, okay, there are two areas I need to fix. And pajamas is always my area I have to fix. PJs are hard. I know, PJs it's hard. are annoying. Yeah. Because I want to be warm, but I'm going to bed next to my husband. I don't want to look like a truck driver, which I'm so sorry. For 20-something years, I've pretty much consistently looked like a truck driver. See, that's my goal. I want to be able to look like a truck driver mm. and not care what they think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll find out someday. With it my greasy really face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It can work sometimes, but... But the point is, um, I was like, okay, I have to up my my jammies game, mm-hmm. and I have some cozies in that list, and then that are like cute, like you can look cute and be cozy and warm and all of that, and then I have to up my athletic wear. So I have my pile of stuff that's leaving my drawers. I've been cleaning out little by little because. Trying on athletic gear is annoying. It's the worst. Because it's all fitted for the most part. <laughs> yeah. So I every yeah. time I have to wear something, like today I put these on, I'm like, okay, these stay. I like these. Um, but nine times out of 10, I've been grabbing the ones that I wasn't sure of. And then like, yep, yeah, nope, nope, Done. nope, nope. Those are low, 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 low-waisted. Not in anymore. We need to go a little more high-waisted. So I've been cleaning out. I had this massive drawer filled with really old athletic stuff. Which is not inspiring. Like, no. and you know, it's the, it's the new year. Like this is the time where everyone's recommitting to health goals and fitness goals. And you know, my word for the year is active. And so, um, I have, uh, have been committed to upping my athletic wardrobe gear. I'm not doing too much, just, just enough to have a few new pieces to be excited about. So I picked them out. I have them all on the site. My Nike leggings, some sports bras, just simple pieces. I'm not somebody who likes a lot of pattern. Yeah. Like this blue is good. It's like a muted blue. Yeah. Hold on. I'll show you guys. Yeah. Uh, give us a give us a twirl. Here we go. Like Ooh. Cute. It's like a little muted blue. Cute. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's important. I think those are areas that we kind of overlook. And yeah. you guys were talking about uh, it, that you're not good with your athletic wear, so right? So bad. Well, and I'm really appreciative. I'm actually excited. I'm <clears> going to go shop your picks because I remember in, when we were in Connecticut last year, you had those like Nike shorts that I was obsessed mm-hmm. with. And when you, I trust you so much with what you buy because you're so, like you, we talked about, you have like so much, you only get what you absolutely like mm-hmm. and you only wear what you're obsessed with. So when you say it's good, I'm like, okay, amazing. Cause then I don't have to try on 45,000 pairs of shorts. It makes it so much easier. Oh my God, I know it's so much. I easier. know I have good style and I'm frugal. I'm yeah. not going to go you're spend. Smart, yeah. Well, listen, like guys, if you, with the caveat there, there will be times you'll see me on Instagram where people have sent me those super expensive things. Mm-hmm. And that's a different story. I, trust me. I am much more frugal in my real life. So if I'm putting my money down, I'm not spending $300 on jeans. It's just not happening, guys. No. It's just not. So um, those free people jeans that I got were $128. And I was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. I haven't bought jeans in so long. I started looking at my jeans. The last ones I bought were so long ago. I was like, You're oh. Like, time to revamp. I think I deserve a new pair. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but athletic wear is hard and really hard. I don't know why, but, um, I feel like it was easier at Macy's than going directly to the athletic brands. And I swear to God, mm-hmm. I mean this 100%. When you go to the other athletic w- sites and we were talking about this recently in an episode, um, they, 
that you guys are going to hear soon yes. with um, Cassie Ho. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they have so many options. It's so overwhelming. It's and exhausting. it's like this inseam measurement and that, and this one's for wet and this one's for dry. I'm like, I, I can't. Mm-mm. So I'm like, I might be see some like Nike. Can we just pick out a few little simple things? We know it works. We know it's good. Call it a day. Keep it simple. Easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go shop your picks. I don't know. <laughs> I actually have to see if Macy's carries um, Athleta because I remember years ago mm. I went and I got some Athleta and I really loved it. Um, but a lot of times if people send me the stuff, it's so much easier because I'm like, oh my God, I love this. Thank you. I hate having to do it myself. Like it gets so overwhelming. So that's another thing, by the way, I'll share with you guys about Macy's and then I'll... I'll move on to the dating portion of the show. They have personal stylists that will help you for free. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So all you have to do is go to Macy's.com backslash personal stylist, and you can connect with a style expert today. Kelsey was doing it earlier, Mm -hmm. kind of checking it out. I said, I go, let's make it easy for the heel squad to show them how this works. Like in another episode, we'll do um, an example episode with one of the stylists to kind of show you how it works because I'll tell you, you know, Kevin and I were recently, um, working on my, um, it's not a masterclass, but it's, what do we call that? Uh, course, a course with boss babe. And one of the things I mentioned in there is how I got my first big break and presentation is everything, right? How you show up, what you look like doesn't mean, are you beautiful? Are you not beautiful? Do you look put together? Do you look like the part, whatever the part is? Mm. And so when I was trying out for Channel One News, which was the first big break on camera I got, um, the description as we got to know what Channel One was is like CNN meets, um, what was it, Kev? CNN meets MTV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was Kevin's like description. It's young kids hosting the news. So it's us and like our flair and our edge and our youth, but we're interviewing and doing important stuff that you would see on CNN. So, um, we went to forever 21. Kevin took me. That's right. (laughs) And the stylist there helped us put together my interview outfits. I had two interview outfits and she had style she was helpful. <clears throat> you know, you don't need to hire a an official stylist to do this. And if you don't have friends that you think have really good style, um, which usually all friends kind of dress the same. <laughs> so True. it means you're either stuck in a rut that's not even yours um, or, you know, or maybe you do have friends that have good style, but it's nice to get another opinion. And you all know this. How many times have you FaceTimed a friend and said, does this look good? Mm -hmm. Is this okay? Does this work together? I'll do it with Dimitri all the time because Dimitri is the best style. I'll ask his opinion all the time. So, and that's me. And I know I've been in the fashion pages for over 20 years. I have cases and cases of magazines. I was thinking about it this morning. I don't know why I was thinking about Britney Spears. I'm like, I was in the fashion pages next to her my whole career. Like her, JLo, like all of these people. Um, I always won best, Mm -hmm. best style. Like Mm -hmm. I always, you know, had good style. So not always, by the way, I I think it it grew. And the more you're around people, good style, you acquire that taste. Um, because I was very insecure when I was younger about it all. I was gonna say the more you were confident, you stepped out of your box, you just owned it. Yeah, Yeah, you get more confidence. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and by the way, ladies, this is something nobody really talks about, I think, but with fashion, you wherever you peaked in your life, if you peaked in high school, if you peaked in college, if you peaked later, wherever it is you peaked and you got the most compliments. That's where you usually get stuck. Whoa. Ooh. So when I can you think see, of it. <laughs> there are like certain people like that I know that same. are still doing that same knee high boot look with Black the this. Knee high boots. By the way, and the knee high boots are cool in a certain way, right? Correct. But there are people who just get stuck in that rut and they don't know it. Mm-hmm. So if you're stuck in that rut, try one of these personal stylists. And, and by the way, you could do nothing greater for yourself for this new year 
than to think about what could another look be? Mm -hmm. Maybe your hair has been super long forever and you don't even use it. You just put it in a bun, right? And like a cool, like little, like shoulder length, little cut would like revive you. And maybe, you know, um, you know, whatever, like there's, or maybe a new fresh color, like maybe don't go to the same people all the time. Try someone who has really great taste, who has done cool things before and, and give yourself like a refresh. I'm going to do that for a friend of ours. Um, it was her Christmas present. I realized she was having a really hard time at work. She's not getting the respect that she deserves and she's an incredible employee and she's so smart and so good at what she does, but she could use a little revival. Mm. And so I said, all right, I know what I'm going to do for Christmas for her gift. I'm going to take her shopping. I used to do it with my mom. I would take my mom shopping and I would put together new outfits for her and be like, mom, I would take the pictures and say, this is how you wear it. Yep. And you know, cause she would get stuck in her ruts too. I did it for my <clears> sister this um, holiday season too. Yeah. That was her Christmas gift. And mm-hmm. you know, I think it's also like, and I know when you're unhappy with your body, like, a lot of people will like go to certain things because yeah. that's where they'll get their compliments. Someone will say, Oh my God, I love your shirt. Cause it's colorful and patterned or whatever, or the jewelry or whatever. Sometimes like sleek is better too. Mm-hmm. Like monochromatic. Like I would put my mom in some like monochromatic looks and have a pop of something somewhere. But sometimes you need to get out of like your rut yeah. and, um, and these Macy's personal stylists, I think will be really helpful I agree. to, to give you something you never thought of. And, um, you know, it's never, it should never be something you don't feel comfortable in. You always want to feel comfortable, but maybe somebody can give you a different opinion and a different look that will give you, oh, I never thought to try this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I really like this. And then you give it a shot, right? Yeah. It's I cool. Agree. I agree. And I have to, I just, I don't know why you're saying that reminded me. I got from my mother, thank you, mother, the yummiest, coziest ideology from Macy's sweatsuit she got us for Christmas. And it this year? This year. Oh. And it's I a, thought you guys didn't get Christmas presents this year. Well, from Doug. <laughs> my dad got me one shoe. He made me pay for the other one. It's a Stop whole, it. I swear to God. What shoes did what shoe did he buy you? Running shoes. Dead. I know. But my mother got me the yummiest, like little sweat outfit. And going off your point, she got this really beautiful, like raspberry color. Mm-hmm. Something I would have never picked. I would have mm-hmm. picked black or gray or this or that. And I put it on and I'm obsessed with it. That's so cool. And so it's like, you know, you need someone. She was like, I thought it'd be pretty on you. And I was like, no, no. Tried it on. Loved it. Yeah. So, you know, you do. You oftentimes need someone else to kind of like push you a little bit yeah. out of your boundaries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Like I don't wear patterns really ever. Um, and then once in a while I'll see something and I'm like, okay, just try it. Or... I've worked with stylists who have put me in things that I was like, I would never in a million <laughs> years have picked that. I'm so grateful yeah. that you showed me this. Yeah. And so, yeah, you just kind of let somebody do their thing and, and try it out and see if it works. So cool. So thank you, Macy's. Thank you, Macy's. We're better together. <laughs> um, let's put that call together. I think that'll be really cool. I agree. Um, but yeah, I think the, the trend's still going to be athleisure and comfy and cozy because COVID isn't going anywhere, guys. Unfortunately, <laughs> she here to stay. I'm crying <laughs> over here. Um, I was hearing, uh, last night, I think people were talking about how Canada is like already kind of closing again, and, again. Yeah. Holy moly. Like, not a, I don't know if it's like official, but it, Wow. And Europe's about to explode with COVID cases, apparently. Oh, like, and I was like, yeah. wait. Wait, I thought we were going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what about travel? us? <laughs> uh, no, I think we could still go to Italy in May. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, I'm superhuman. Right now, I could lick the ground. I could lick telephones. <laughs> um, the 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 stop, the the, the buttons up oh, to cross gross. streets. Gross. I could lick those right now. I'm superhuman because I've got my, my immunity. You're immune. That's how I feel, honestly, after getting my booster. I didn't want to get it. And then I got it and I was like, yes. Same. I feel like yeah. indestructible now. That's exactly. So funny. Well, um, let's switch over to dating wow. because I did promise the people we would talk about online dating and COVID dating. So Kelsey... Um, as one of our resident single people, single young people, um, I will let you tell us about app dating. Oh, Maria, it's the worst. 
It's the worst. I think that... When did you get on apps? Because you recently. are just opening up to dating. Correct. Finally. Correct. Yeah. I was very much like, you know, career, career, career. I didn't really care about... And I still don't, honestly. Like, I'm not fully invested. But now I'm kind of getting to a point in my life where I'm like, I'm ready. I would like to go on some dates. How old are we again? 27. 27. I'll be just 20, to remind everyone. 28 in March. So basically 30. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I... But Kelsey has had... So here's the thing. And this is this is the thing I worry about with your generation is you were very young. Yeah. Mm. A year ago when I met you... Oh, I get what you're saying. You were very young. Mm. Like you were 19 going on 26. Mm. Harry Styles posters on the wall. Okay, so whatever. I love Harry Styles. Yeah, but like <laughs> at some point you gotta like mature past yeah. like the posters on the wall, mm-hmm. the stuffed animals in the bed. Like it's like you we got gotta like you. I know, I know. But the <laughs> truth is, like, but you were really young. But what happens mm-hmm. with that is, is you really think you're still 19. Mm. And then you wake up and you're 35 and the doctors are like, you don't have eggs. <laughs> oh my goodness. So do you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you don't start the process now at 27 of like meeting people, when are you going to meet somebody? Like I, I'm pretty sure you want to have kids. I don't No, Definitely. I do. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was, you kind of went through my head. I mean, honestly, that's what I would assume. It's like you had this, like this, you know, growth spurt, maturity turnover to control of your life kind of thing in this last year and a half. Yeah. And you've blossomed into this, you know, really great young woman. Not that you weren't Thank great you. before, but no, I get what you're saying. Um, you were just younger, right? But what happens is, because I think I don't know, your, your people have all coined the whole term about adulting is so hard. I can't believe I don't understand. <laughs> Millennials did, I do yeah, not understand that, guys, because <laughs> you just become adults and you do it. That's yeah. it. I don't know why adulting is so hard. Yeah. And maybe because you know parents did all the adulting for you guys. I don't know. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. So then what happens is you have that delayed growth and then you, what we, you don't want to happen for me, it was different. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, you have to be careful. You don't want to wake up and have missed your window to have kids Mm. because we were so focused on career. Right. You guys are so focused on adulting. It's hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Honestly, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But you know what I'm saying? It is kind of true. Yeah. And I think honestly, for me, when I look at it, I was so focused. My like, when I graduated college till now, I honestly just kept my head down and wanted to make it, wanted to make it, wanted to make it, wanted to get into entertainment, you know? And like, I agree with you on the young part too, but that for me, it was like my number one focus was career. Mm -hmm. And not that it's not now, but it's like, that was my number one thing. I didn't really care about anything else. So now, like you said, it's like, I matured. (laughs) I kind of came, came to, and I'm like, okay, maybe we can put ourselves out there a little. And I also like have more confidence in who I am. I know Mm -hmm. who I am now better than I ever have with all the work I've done, Mm -hmm. like with you guys in the last year. So yeah, now I am jumping on the apps. I hate them all, but I'm trying not to. Our good friend, Ashley. Which apps are we on? So I I was on Hinge for a while, which I kind of still am, but I don't use it as much. But Ashley... um, Daniels got me on Raya. Which Ashley, is, one of our former producers in a different iteration of this show. Yes, who we love. And she got me on Raya, which is a little bit more, it used to be back in the day, like a celebrity dating app. Mm-hmm. It was like only celebrities. Now they've opened it up to like, okay, if you're in the business or you can kind of prove that you do something in the business, they let you on. And it's like, it's hard. It's really, it really is hard because the difference where Hinge was like, Anybody and anyone could be on there and you had to weed through. But now with Raya, it's very much like these people all think they're the shit because they're on Raya. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's tough. And then let me go even one further with Raya. All these guys think that like when you match, usually they will message you. But on Raya, nope. They're like, you can message me. And I'm like, oh, frick off. No, unless I'm like really, really like I think, I don't know. I'm interested in someone. Unless there's a poll. Exactly. I'll message. But otherwise I'm like, no, you can message me. Don't be like that. Don't think that you're better, but it's, it's a tough, it's really tough. Who's your, are you on dating apps? No, not out here. Like in the city, it was a little easier because it's, I know New York city is huge, but everyone kind of knows everyone. Uh So you're not Mm -hmm. like so freaked out. You're not like this person's a crazy person. Like there's always a mutual, Mm -hmm. but here I don't, I didn't know that many people. So I was just kind of like, eh. Also, like, you know, I'm trying to like get my footing here, make friends, like, you know, do well in work. So when I got to LA, 
I haven't really been on it, but Kels has told me so many fun stories that make me <laughs> never want to go on them out here. <laughs> so oh I my doubt God. I'm going to, I'm going to join them here, but um, I have some friends who, who've joined and it's just funny because in the city you get like, I work in Goldman Sachs. I live in Murray Hill. Like I went to like Bucknell and then out here it's like, I work at Warner brothers. Like I I'm like a skater bro. Or I'm a surfer bro. It's just such difference, different vibes, is, like yeah. such different vibes, which I, I was not. Which vibe Expecting. are you more into? Definitely the California vibe. Oh. For mm. sure. She oh wants God. a skater boy. More laid back. Anytime laid back. there's a picture of them surfing, I like it because I'm like, teach me how to surf. Dead. Teach me how to so, surf. So, so Kelsey, tell us some of the stories that Pooja is horrified by and doesn't want to do dating apps because <laughs> that's the fun stuff. I, I'm telling you, back when this was, back when I did Sirius XM, mm-hmm. I used to have all my single friends on the show and they would tell their dating stories so and funny. it was insanely funny. Marcy had a man who she went to his house and he had padlocks on the refrigerator. Oh, hell no. Because he had no (gasps) self-control. And I'm like, wait, I I don't understand. Another guy who wanted to smell her armpits at all times. And I was like, what what is happening? What's going on? And I was like, thank God I have Kevin. Thank God. Oh my God. Yeah. See, I feel like I used to get more of the, when I was younger and first moved here, I was on, you know, when Tinder was still not just the, let's hook up app. Mm-hmm. I was on Tinder and I was on hinge and I think I was on Bumble and I had a few like crazy stories from back then. Now I'm so much more like I can read right through people. Yeah. And let me tell you, hinge has this new feature now that is really just, it's an easy way for guys to shoot themselves in the foot. They had, they can record themselves. So it's like a prompt mm-hmm. and then they can like voice record an answer. It is the most scarring horrifying, hilarious. I want to hear it. Pull one up. It's oh hysterical. my God. Okay. I have a good one. I have all of these screen recorded. What do you mean they can like record themselves? Maria? It's like it's them like saying a, a message like, Hey baby. Yes. Just you wait. Really? It's like yep. a voice message. You're the gonna pictures die. are hard enough. So when Ashley was here, when COVID first started, Ashley came and quarantined with us. She was scared. She was alone out here. I'm like, I got you. Just come over. And so I was having so much fun on her dating app swiping because I've never done this before, right? And so I would swipe and I'm like, oh my God, these people and their grandiose egos and everything has oh to God, be this yeah. like shot of their 12 oh, yeah. packs and their this is and that. And I'm like, this is so creepy to me. It's yeah. awful. It's Immediate, like they love yeah. themselves so yes. much. And then if you're if they're doing that, what are the girls gonna have to do? You yeah. gotta meet that, right? Yeah. So then it's like it's just so crazy. I okay. feel like for me, an, an immediate red flag is any mirror and or gym pics. And I oh, probably yeah. would say 99% of mm-hmm. girls, at least my friends, feel that way. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> and when we come back, Kelsey's going to play the audio that's cringeworthy. Stand by. All right, Are Kels. you ready for this? Okay. So just to give you guys... Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. So the prompt... <sighs> the prompt is how to pronounce my name. Okay. So this is the guy's response. What? Well, I just hold the okay, area. You pronounce my name by saying "Daddy Derek." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if anyone didn't Daddy, hear that, Daddy, Daddy Derek. Derek, you pronounce my name by saying "Daddy." I need to see Derek. his photo right now. You're bring it over crazy, to me. Crazy Maria. There's so many TikToks of just the cringiest ones. Oh my god, guys. I wanted to die. I think it's I would so be single bad. for life if this. Oh, oh my God! Come on, he's got a Yankees shirt I on. Is that a Yankee shirt? Dodgers. Dodgers. I wanted to die. Derek, really? Hold on, I gotta play it again. Why is this not playing? Press the. There you go. You pronounce my name by saying "Daddy Derek." Shut up. It's, like, shut up. it's too much. Oh my so lord. Many. How come I can't? I want to see his profile now. Oh, I didn't. I, you I deleted didn't him. him. Oh, God. Guys, this yeah. is what's out there. Okay, what else? was? It, okay, what was the motorcycle man? Okay, I need to know so that. The motorcycle one is actually- Honey, did you hear that? Did you get to hear that, Kev? Yeah, I want to date him. <laughs> I want to date him. Like, okay, that's but, not hot. It sounds amazing. No, but let me give you guys. So this is a really interesting perspective. My friend Rod, who <laughs> yeah, is a big TikToker, he told me, I always send him them because I think they're so funny. And he's like, Kelsey, here's my theory though. These guys are now doing it. So girls will screen record it and put it on TikTok and make them famous. Oh. And I was like, Rod, 
even that's worse. It. You're brilliant. It is even but worse. But even worse. It's, so they're trying to make it as cringeworthy as possible. So anyways, that's, I always said that's a very interesting observation, Rod. Brilliant. Wow. Brilliant. Will I go viral if I do that? Sure. You can call me Maria. Oh my God, Maria. Yeah. Oh, we, we can do it. You got this. So, you okay. Motorcycle second. story. Okay. Motorcycle, motorcycle story. Motorcycle story is actually not from an app. It's a, someone I've known for a while. And for some reason he's now interested in me. I don't know why. I'm like, where did that come from? Whatever. And he texted me the other day to that or asked if I wanted to go like whatever go. He didn't even ask. He was like, let me take you for like a motorcycle ride. He's obsessed with his motorcycles. Okay. Let me take you for a motorcycle ride this weekend, whatever. We can go through the canyon. And I was kind of like, ah, ha, ha, whatever. So then I said it to Kevin. This is somebody you're normally just friends with? You know, it's someone uh, we're not close. We've just known each other for a while. Okay. And so like I've known and him. And so he randomly texted you. You guys don't talk all the time. No, correct. Yeah. And he said, Hey, let me take you. Yeah. Let me take you for a ride. Basically. Basically. Okay. He basically, he actually said, I, I think it was along the lines of, I ride motorcycles. Like I stole them. Something stupid like that. I was like, shut up. Okay. Whatever. So Sounds then, fun. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I ride I would, motorcycles. Like I stole them. Sounds real fun. To I, me. I would go except for, I knew, um, dad, Kevin, Kevin would object. So daddy, Kevin, dad, daddy, oh, just got so no, weird. Daddy. no daddy, that just, just dad, so weird. just dad, Kevin. So I said, Hey, Kev, my, uh, my new boyfriend wants to take me for, for a motorcycle ride. And he was like, oh, that's great. Absolutely effing not. <laughs> it was the it most was perfect. It was perfectly timed. It was hilarious. So anyways, that's the motorcycle story. Really? She can't go, honey? Uh, here's the thing. In, in, not in Los helmet? Angeles. 100% of my, of my, I'm a licensed motorcycle driver of 30 years. And I would never get on a bike in Los Angeles. And every single person I know that's had one in LA eventually dumps the bike gets hit mm -hmm. it's so no not mm -hmm. happening okay next question next person to me <laughs> exactly swipe left thank you daddy <laughs> kevin swipe thank you left. daddy so <laughs> creepy this is so creepy oh so anyways i'll keep you posted on my my journey you um, haven't gone on any dates yet no no not from Raya. i you know i did a couple of not god not recently a couple of hinge dates a while ago like years okay. ago but my roommate she is a constant she's a frequent frequent roster from hinge and i'm always very like i admire her to be honest i'm like how do you how and most maybe of maybe she doesn't have as high as standards honestly probably i have very no but high. it's true like yeah. some people just have different standard levels yeah and so she she recently she has a new one who it's been like the only one she's been seeing and i love him he's wonderful some of the past ones not a fan but you know, <laughs> like, I love the new one. <laughs> I love the new one. We love him. So I'll keep you posted on my dates. They have to ask me though. That's the thing. It's like, I even put it on my profile. It's like, I love guys who will actually make plans. Like just ask me on a date guys in LA do not do that. They're like, let's chill. Do you want to hang out? No, take me. I'm so easy. Let's go for a walk. Like, yeah. you know, I'm wait, like, so no. let's chill. Is that code for let's Yeah, come over and we'll hook up. No, not happening. Uh, okay, so it's not well, that being Well, it could be interpreted as, you know, let's get to know each other. No, let's get to know each other over coffee. What if they want to watch gemstones with you? Down, say that. Say yeah. that. Okay. I don't know. You guys, sometimes you just want to take all the fun out of the dating. <laughs> That's nice. what I think. I well, would you know, Honestly, but you know what's so interesting one. for any guys listening to this? Hmm. This is how you stand out. It, truly. Be like a game. throwback. If, if, if only some throwbacks could pop up that they're just like these gentlemen who like ask you on a proper date, yes. they pay for the first date, yes. you know, cause now I think we've confused men so much. I agree. And so they don't know what to do. Like they're afraid to offer to pay and take your independence away and like whatever, yes. like you don't know what kind of girl you're meeting and mm. how you might offend her before you even started. That's a good point. So that is a good point. I think you probably need to put in your profile. I want an OG throwback guy <laughs> that pays for the first date that Actually asks, asks me, me on a proper yeah. date that holds my door. If you aren't this guy, it's not right. Right. Like just be very mm -hmm. clear. This is, but by the way, this is the lesson in life. You have to be crystal clear with mm -hmm. what you want because no one can be a mind reader, 
right? Even psychics don't have that ability to just read people's minds constantly and know what they want. So you got to ask for what you want very clearly. Don't assume they're going to know that for you. Don't assume that they think or know, or they should know. The second you start saying, well, they should know. Nope. Nope. Not unless you told them. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Basically what I'm holding out for is Kevin Maria to introduce me to some cool guy. Yeah. That's going to happen. I think so too. Mm-hmm. I do. Have, I, listen, cause I you know why? To, cause a I always lot advise of like, people to find out through friends, get, you, you I, know what I mean? Get mutual. connected through friends because yeah. mm-hmm. there's well, a little bit of a screening each problem. person, right? So exactly. the hard thing is, is usually like I'll have one that I don't have a match for because they're so great. Like, so when I would have parties, I would think ahead who I was going to connect and it. match. I would literally sit by the pool the day before and say, okay, here's the guest list. Who is a good connect with who? <laughs> and and then I would put friends on introducing them because I knew I'd be drunk at some point. <laughs> anyway, um, but I had an agenda. I was like, okay, this person needs to know this person because, Brilliant. you know, it, it's hard. There's such a long getting to know you phase that you have to get through to really trust, really understand people. I said, even in a work relationship, that's why mm-hmm. Kelsey and I, I think, um, are really lucky is we were back in Connecticut together. We had all this time to really know each other as humans yes, and not have to wonder, well, is she thinking this or is she doing that? Is she taking advantage? We just knew. Right. We just, we were living with each other, waking up together, eating breakfast together, mm-hmm. eating lunch, eating dinner. Like we had a lot of time. So none of that wondering or the, this is my favorite, too many conversations with yourself uh, too many conversations with your friends where their opinions are inserted and they have no idea because oh. they're not there. So it's like, it's really hard because a relationship takes a long time to build so that there's trust and oh, yeah. the youth, you know, sometimes I would look at Kevin, like he's too good to be true. Mm-hmm. I just sit there and I'd look at every area where, where is the hidden thing? And that's why when people, when people see Kevin, who's so generous and will literally come and do the most insanely generous thing to you or for you. Um, they always think he has a hidden agenda and I'm, it's great that he has me cause I'm always like, guys, he, he really doesn't actually, this is just who he is. I've watched for 24 years. I think that's more than enough time. I mean, if he's, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer and I don't know it <laughs> and he doesn't show it till year 30. Well, I'm so sorry, but by 24 years, I know. Yeah. So, well, you guys have such a beautiful partnership though. And that's where like, I mm-hmm. think why I struggle on the apps. Cause that's what I want. I want like, yeah. I really do. I want like a partnership like that. I know I need my independence and I need someone who's going to respect that. Like, I don't know. Not to easy that, to find. No, well, you're going to have to find. go older generally. Yeah, exactly. Um, I knew that I needed somebody older. Yeah. That was going to be me. more mature mm-hmm. and stuff. And so, and I, I am really blessed because Kevin does give me my freedom and my independence and is and so great. You, yeah. By the way, don't think we don't fight like crazy sometimes, <laughs> or, you know, we don't have those things that are like little triggers where over so many years, um, these, you know, different patterns, like things that the, we're, we're working on, but mm. that's what a relationship is. It's work. So I don't want to paint some rosy picture because it's not always perfect, yeah. but we figure it out and we get through for now until we don't, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it's really hard. So you need to give and be patient and understand it's going to take a long time. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I'm glad you're starting to focus because it's t- you're 27. Yeah. And here's the thing that people also don't tell you as you get older, you get more stuck in your ways. Mm. You get way, way independent. That's a good point. And then no one can get in. Right. Because your walls are up. It's not even just walls. You have a lifestyle now uh-huh. that doesn't have someone, you don't have to share it with anybody. Mm. You don't have to give. Mm-hmm. You don't have to collaborate. You don't have to have that give and take. So it's hard later when someone wants to take and you're like, I don't want to give. <laughs> you're like, uh-uh, I'm fine without it. I like my life. Wait, how do I? Uh, it's a great uh. point. And they get stuck in their ways. They get more and more and more and more rigid and they don't understand why they can't find a partner. Yeah. When he just farted, it really smells. <laughs> um, that's why. Yeah. The older you get, the longer you're independent and on your own, it's really hard to mesh your life with somebody Mm. else. Now, I don't know from firsthand experience because I meshed at 19. Right. But I see my other friends and I see 
how hard it is when it's always your way. Mm. You wake up and you do whatever you want but every day. It's really hard when somebody comes into the mix and now you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So it's good that you're starting now. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, yeah. and I feel it. And, if you, and it feels right now, honestly. Yeah. You know, Cindy Dale, who's been on the show, did tell me that she sees 28 for me. She sees the number 28 and me being with someone. I said, mm-hmm. thanks, Cindy. You know, I don't fully. I'm like, and if that's not the case, whatever. But I've always had, you know, if I've ever gotten readings or anything, they always said later in my life I would find someone because I had to <laughs> find myself first. And I yeah. feel like this last year I really have and have done a lot of work and mm-hmm. continue to do the work. But it's like... I'm ready yeah. now. So well, and you're a giver, so you would have given to them, yes. and you wouldn't have taken care of your health. Yes. So that's agreed. That's a big thing. I know I'm a giver. Yeah. I I have to take care of my health, and so I'm mm-hmm. making conscious movements forward to do that right now on a different level. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but it's hard, yeah. and um, and you do have to give some of yourself yeah. and you have mm-hmm. to uh, compromise. That was the word compromise. I was trying to come up with earlier. <laughs> There's a lot of compromising. And when you're not used to compromising, right. it gets really, really hard. Now, some people won't want to admit it, but I watch it plain as day all day long with my friends. Yeah. And yeah. so, and it's like, then it's just very, there's a lot of friction. It's like, well, no, why do we have to do it like that? Why can't we do it like this? Why can't, no, mm, just turn right here. Why, right. why do it? And then it's just like orders and orders and orders. Right. And it's, it's really hard and it's to integrate. Gross, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll keep you posted on Daddy Derek. <laughs> Daddy <laughs> Derek. Tell us, that's exciting. 28. That's like right around the corner. Yeah. Oh, that Cindy said that? Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm kind of like not trying to think about it. Okay. But yeah. I'm so doing my work. Can we have like a secret word? Ooh. Yeah. So when you meet someone and we know he's totally wrong and totally oh, bad, do. because we oh, are yeah. almost two decades older than you people. Oh, I fully how trust much you older guys. Am I than you? Sixteen years. Sixteen yeah. years older. Mm-hmm. Okay. You probably eighteen years older. How old are you? Twenty two. Twenty two. Oh, twenty one years older. Wow. Okay. Wow. So two decades older for sure. Ish. Over older here. sister. So. Um, we're gonna know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I and I fully trust you guys. Like, so I will. <laughs> I I will just need a code word if you choose, Pooja. You may not choose to ask for my code word. You may choose not to ask for my code word. But if you give me the code word, I want your code and word. I see it. I'm gonna say it. I want your code word. Well, what's the code word? Oh yeah, what's the code like word? Like pineapple or something. Pineapple. Just remind me when it okay. comes time. <laughs> okay. What's, what's, what's the, the code, code word? word? All my psychics I've been to have said I'm meeting my husband this year, 2022. No way. Wow. That crazy. I went two years ago and then in 2020 and she's like 2022. And then I went to another one and they're like, oh, this year. And then one of them's like, you already met your soulmate. And I was like, this is too much. I don't want to think about this Do right now. Do you know who it is? No. You think you have an idea. Come on. You know who. Well, like there's maybe, people circling, circulating. Your maybe, mind. Circulating? but I don't know. I'm like, if that's my, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we're all going to need a code word soon because we're meeting our soulmate. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Interesting. Okay. I think Winnie's my soulmate, but oh my she's God. all our soulmates. Guys, she's just I laying really down, do. sleeping on top of me. Uh, yep. All right. Well, that is our show for today. Let's recap. We talked about crying in the fetal position <laughs> over <laughs> loss and how that just is, how it is, highs and lows. We're riding them all. Why puppies um, are important. Why uh, puppies are important. Um, making the most of getting COVID. By the way, Alyssa called me today. She's had COVID. And oh, I didn't she's know like, that. today, I don't know where she goes, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, I've just, I got to sleep in this morning. Oh, that's great. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm watching TV. She's like, I just started watching Ray Donovan. I go, what took you so long, lady? And, um, and I said to her, I go, you know, Kevin has been telling me this for so many years. We had a carny vacation. His carny vacation is basically what he used to do after working in the carny business is he would just hibernate like, mm-hmm. like a bear and get his strength back and then go out and do the work again. We did it once in our lifetime here as a couple. And for one whole week during the Christmas break, we just sat in the screening room and just slept so the time good. away. We ordered food in there. We never left. We never moved. And it was incredible. And then we never did it again. And so getting COVID at this holiday break was a blessing in disguise. Mm. We slept and and rested. And I had time to kind of like do things that I never get to do, like attack my 
athletic gear wardrobe. I know that sounds <laughs> stupid, but to no, me, it's it a doesn't. big deal because every time I went in that drawer, I was like, ugh, and it never felt good. Every time I went in the pajama drawer, ugh, never well, felt when good. when do you have time to do you And don't. you never have time yeah. to deal with it. So it was really nice to, to get to deal with it and to get to do a lot of like research and look around and see what I really wanted. And so, um, so we talked about that. We officially onboarded Macy's into Better Together. Yes. Um, Heel Squad, look out. We are going to do some giveaways with them too, right? Mm-hmm. We are talking to everybody that we're working with about doing some giveaways with you guys. We have some really amazing ones coming up too. Um, and the, the idea of having a personal stylist help you when you have a free one like Macy's is willing to give you, take advantage of it. And by the way, I really enjoy this. So if you are part of the heel squad and you want my help, I can give you some ideas. So if you want to send a picture, I can give you some ideas on what to do and what could look good on you and what could be great and to try. Mm -hmm. Um, Or what if they have, you know, like areas of their life they want it, they need help in their work wardrobe or help in their going out. And then you can throw it on the... Yeah. Curated page. Exactly. So um, I really do enjoy it. I know I don't have like a crazy amount of time, but like yesterday we got an email from a Heal Squad member that was just diagnosed with a brain tumor. She's like, I'm a long time listener. Can you help? I'm like, of course. Yeah. So um, even though my doctors all told me I have to stop for a minute because it's PTSD for me. <laughs> oh, no. And they're like, you need a minute to like get better, but I can't not answer the call. So I'm going to. Yeah. Um, but I'm here for you guys. And so is Macy. So between the two of us, we will help you. Um, January Hill event is a next Tuesday with psychic medium and astrologer, Jessica Lanyadu. I will tell you guys, this is such a big get because she is not even taking clients. She's so booked. Yeah. I just asked her to do a friend, uh, a favor who really needed one. And so, um, she's squeezing that person in. You still have time to sign up. It's $10 a month at that $10 a month. You get ad free shows, an extra show a week, and you get the heel events with incredible, um, healers and gurus and astrologers. Um, and so that is coming up. Don't miss the opportunity to join. Um, and you get the backlog of all the other heel events too, right. which is like you, you know, yoga nidra, crazy ridiculous. I mean, shadow. There's so much good stuff in there, you guys. So, uh, click the link in the Instagram better together with Maria or in mine, join us on Patreon and uh, shout out to all of our amazing, um, friends who have sent reviews into Apple podcasts. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you can take a second, we'll put a link to it in the summary of this episode. Send us a review. Let us know um, how the show is helping you or um, RGF. And by the way, I know I should talk RGF a lot. <laughs> I'm kidding. It is saved. Don't Yay. worry. And so RGF is here to stay. Wow. Until Kevin screws up. <laughs> so See, if Kevin doesn't make me my coffee in the morning one morning, I might wake up. And decide no RGF. And decide no RGF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for being with us. Uh, in the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. <laughs>